you sometimes feel that your life is very boring it's not having fulfillment things are just going and there's no life in it there's no enrichment there's no there's nothing happening although so many things are happening <laughs> things are moving but there is no progress everything is there or maybe there are some things which are not there but even if those things which are there they don't make you feel that there's something in your life all right so if that sounds like somebody then you are in the right place so today we will discuss the third shloka of the shrimad bhagavatam and these shlokas are completely power packed they are full with spiritual potency because these are the beginning shlokas of the shrimad bhagavatam of course every shloka is like that every shloka is potent but especially these shlokas which are there in the beginning because they set the tone the mood the proper attitude to hearing the shrimad bhagavatam all right so if you have not watched the other videos in this playlist of shrimad bhagavatam then you can go to the playlist and watch it or else you may not understand what i am saying here and yes if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation then you can go to my website below down in the description section and yes before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him at least here you will find him in these verses <laughs> all right so this is the third shloka we will recite the shloka and then we will see the translation and purport and this is a very famous shloka because this shloka speaks about the beauty of the speaker of the shrimad bhagavatam all right not physical beauty of course nigama kalpa tarur galitam phalam shuka mukhad amrita darava samyutam pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavu kaha translation oh expert and thoughtful man relish shrimad bhagavatam the mature fruit of the desire tree of vedic literatures it emanated from the lips of shri sukhdev goswami therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all including liberated souls so it said that relish shrimad bhagavatam here the mature fruit of the desire tree of vedic literatures so why do they say desire tree desire tree means it's like kalpa vriksh which means that any desire that you have the vedas and upanishads and puranas like the vedic literatures that term is coined here which encompasses the vedas puranas upanishads and ramayana mahabharata itihasa shruti smritis everything but it's said here that this is the mature fruit of the desire tree so in the vedas and upanishads and puranas and other scriptures anything that you desire there is some way or the other by which you can fulfill it so you want a beautiful partner a rich partner that also there are uh, ways that you worship this person that person you do this you do that all right then maybe you get in this life or maybe in some other lifetime so that is why the vedic scriptures are known as desire trees and this is the mature fruit of the desire tree so it's like the ripened fruit it's and which is that ripened fruit shrimad bhagavatam so it said here that relish shrimad bhagavatam the mature fruit of the desire tree of vedic literatures so when we should when we are reading we should relish it we should cherish it imagine a ripe mango which is at its peak and whenever we see we feel like eating it right or at least taking the juice so now it said that it emanated from the lips of shri sukhdev goswami sukhdev goswami is the speaker of shrimad bhagavatam he spoke the shrimad bhagavatam to uh, parikshit maharaj as we all know and he had uh, heard this from his father marishi vyas vyas dev is the uh, writer of all the scriptures we know so sukhdev goswami is the son of vyas dev and he heard it from his father and now he repeats but who is saying that it emanated from the lips of sukhdev goswami he cannot say this right because then he would say that it's emanating from my lips so 
Sudh Goswami and other sages, they are discussing this in the Naimisharanya forest. So when Sukhdev Goswami was uh, speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam to Parikshit Maharaj, when Parikshit Maharaj had only seven days, uh, and that in that place, in that assembly, in that sabha, Sut Goswami was also speaking, uh, sitting, okay. So Sut Goswami, is another great sage, so he he heard the Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukhdev Goswami like everybody else and then later on he goes to Naimi Sharanya forest where different sages asks, ask him different questions and one of the great sages uh, who ask questions is um, what is his name I am not able to recall his name maybe I, I will recall yeah? Shona Krishi yes Shona Krishi is the one who asks questions to Sudh Goswami that Please tell us, what did you hear there? <laughs> so in Srimad Bhagavatam, you will uh, always keep seeing this zooming in and zooming out. So sometimes you will see statements like Suta Uvacha. So you have to understand Sud Goswami speaking. Sometimes you will see Sukha Uvacha, all right, which means Sukhdev Goswami, the son of Vyasdev, he is speaking. So sometimes you will see a Viduru Vacha, no? Maitri Vacha. So Maitri Muni is speaking something, then Viduri is speaking something. So you have to understand how the flow is happening. Basically, uh, this this is like a narration of somebody else, and then that person is narrating somebody else, and that person is narrating somebody else. It's like a layered narration, all right. But the beauty is because it is in a authorized disciplic succession in the parampara. So. The message is not lost it is as it is but what is mentioned here that Srimad Bhagavatam was already uh, very tasteful but it has become more relishable because it has come out from the mouth of, of Sukhdeva Goswami so he is of of course he is a great uh, self-realized soul he is a Paramhamsa actually Paramhamsa means one who is completely spiritual and he has no material motives, no ulterior motives. He cannot distinguish between uh, anything. Like he cannot distinguish between the body of a man or a woman. For him, everything is same because he doesn't see the body. He sees directly the soul. All right. So for him, the body of a dog or the body of a cat or of a boy or a girl, everything is same. So that's what is mentioned here. That. Because it came out from his mouth, it became more sweet. The nectar was already there, but it became even more nectarian. That's what is said. Because now, why why does this happen? Because when great souls they speak, they have their consciousness. So it's not just the delivery or reading. So from whom we are hearing, from whom we are reading, yes, under whose guidance. That is also very important. So. Sukhdeva Goswami, because he is completely self-realized, he is a great soul. He is completely aware of all the spiritual truths and the conclusion of the scriptures. That is why when he speaks, he speaks with his realization also. So now when we are discussing, we may say that, okay, this is there, that is there. But we just theoretically know it. We do not, we do not have that realization inside. At least I don't have as of now. <laughs> So, but in his case, it is not like this. So, he is speaking with the realization also. So, he has a lot of potency inside him. So, therefore, this message becomes even more powerful. All right. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Before this also, it was very relishable, including liberated souls. So, this this is very interesting so Srimad Bhagavatam is one <coughs> one such uh, literature which the people who are uh, desiring to obtain liberation mm -hmm. spiritual perfection they relish and those who are already liberated it's written including liberated souls even they also relish this that's the beauty so either you are a beginner or you are advanced in your spiritual life or you have perfected so Irrespective of that, you can still relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. So now we will read the purport. It's a very long purport. The shlokas uh, in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the purports are extremely long. In the previous, 
in the two previous shlokas the purport begins in the two previous shlokas it has been definitely proved that the shrimad bhagavatam is the sublime literature which surpasses all other vedic scriptures due to its transcendental qualities it is transcendental to all mundane activities and mundane knowledge in this shloka it is stated that shrimad bhagavatam is not only a superior literature but it is the ripened fruit of the vedic literatures in other words it is the cream of all vedic knowledge considering all this patient and submissive hearing is definitely essential with great respect and attention one should receive the message and lessons imparted by the shrimad bhagavatam so as we had discussed earlier <coughs> that dharma projito kaitavatro paramo nirmatsala nam satam that shrimad bhagavatam kicks out <coughs> all other varieties of uh religious processes which do not give you god but which gives you you know materialistic resources like the opulences of god that how can you become more wealthy more beautiful more you know, popular more powerful and all 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 this stuff basically so shrimad bhagavatam gives you god directly as a person so shrimad bhagavatam is therefore considered to be the supreme of all literatures because no other scripture directly tells you about god about who god is how he looks like what he does what his activities are yes because he is the highest thing that we should actually aspire to obtain in, a, in instead of you know running after his resources like you know wealth and prosperity and all these all these things so that is why this gives us the highest thing it gives us god himself rather than his resources that is why this is known as the cream of all vedic knowledge and patient and submissive hearing is definitely essential so we had seen earlier that if you want to argue and skeptically we read the shrimad bhagavatam like many scholars these days do then they cannot benefit from it they will just read and you know then then they cannot relish then their life will still be the way it is they will not relish the shrimad bhagavatam the vedas are compared to the desire tree because now you see because they contain all things knowable by man they deal with mundane necessities as well as spiritual realization the vedas contain regulated principles of knowledge covering social political religious economic military medicinal chemical physical and metaphysical matter and all that may be necessary to keep the body and soul together so vedas contain lot of knowledge about how to maintain your body properly how to keep your body and soul together like this ashtanga yoga is there you know which is popular as yoga these days you know like doing asanas and so many other things that's just one example above and beyond all these this are specific directions for spiritual realization regulated knowledge involves a gradual raising of the living entity to the spiritual platform and the highest spiritual realization is knowledge that the personality of god is the reservoir of all spiritual tastes or rasas okay so this means that the ultimate conclusion of all the scriptures as lord krishna also says in the gita na vedesh cha sarve aham eva vedyo vedanta kitve davi deva cha aham that i am the ultimate conclusion of all the scriptures you know i am after reading all the scriptures i am to be known so you know, he, he also says i am the creator of the vedas also and i it's it's like saying i have created the vedas and i am the object of the veda so so uh, this by gradually following you know the spiritual processes which we have in the scriptures then we can obtain spiritual perfection gradually and what's the ultimate source of spiritual realization to realize that the personality of god or lord vishnu he is the reservoir of all spiritual tastes or rasas all right this shloka is there raso vai saha this shloka is also there and yes so there are 12 primary rasas rasas means moods basically uh, for the platform of interaction how god interacts with his devotees so about which we will discuss in the next video so there are different uh, rasas like daya dasya sakya 
भयान भयानक अच्छा भयानक विभत्स शांत वात्सल्य अद्भुत श्रृंगा श्रृंगार हास्य रौद्र वीर सो मेनी रसाज भाई गॉड वी विल डिस्कस दिस इन दी नेक्स्ट वीडियो राइट अंटिल देन watch the other videos and you can also watch the bhagavad gita series which i have and yes if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation you can go to my link down in the description for my website okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay bye bye